Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Let's get back to one of our top stories on your screen right now. San Antonio police searching for a missing one year old girl from here in San Antonio. This is Aviani Brown. She was last seen in the overnight hours on San Antonio's northeast side near Eisenhower Road and Mid Crown. She was wearing a white beanie, black jacket, a gray onesie that says unity and orange sweatpants. Authorities believe she may be in danger. All right, so authorities are looking for this man in connection to her abduction. This is 20 year old Jay Sean Brown. He is 5'7", was last seen wearing all black. He is believed to be driving a white 2020 Honda Accord. And we do have a Texas license plate. It is PJB2582. And if you've seen if Mavani or know anything about where she could be, you are asked to call the San Antonio Police Department. That number on your screen, 210-207-7660. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday, February 2nd. Thanks for joining us. And weather, of course, has been the top story for the past couple of days. But we're starting to see the ice melt, and most of the major winter weather is moving out of our area. But we know the Hill Country was hit a lot harder than we were here in San Antonio. That's right. We spent a lot of time reporting on what was happening in Bernie over over the past few days and right now the city is advising residents that a large power outage across the area will happen at 9 a.m. Now it was originally supposed to happen at 8 a.m. but it got pushed back an hour. Crews are trying to address power outage issues for residents in order to repair those damages to the transmission line caused by the icy weather. The Lower Colorado River Authority, or LCRA, had to turn off all services at one of their substations. Now they're hoping, cross your fingers, that the work only takes about an hour to complete, but we'll continue to check with the City of Bernie and the Bernie Police Department to see if there are any more delays up there in the Bernie area. Yeah, we'll keep you updated, and for now, at 36 degrees, very cold still. It is still cold, but above freezing, and this is important. We've seen that temperature actually rise overnight. A lot of the ice is starting to melt, but now we're seeing the damage uh, that has been left behind. All those trees down across the hill country, there's going to be a lot of cleanup today. A lot. There's still some places in the hill country, I should add, that are below freezing. Before we jump into that, a little bit of fun here. we got to talk about Groundhog Day. Today is Groundhog Day. We haven't mentioned it the last couple of days. And Phil, well, he's uh, predicting more winter. Can you believe that? I mean, shouldn't you know that we're pretty much done with it at this point? At least uh, I think here in South Texas, we don't want to see any more. Uh, he is predicting or has predicted 108 more winters, 20 early springs. He's only about 36% accurate. OK, so take it, you know, take it with a grain of salt. It's just Phil, but Groundhog Day. That's what he's going for. More winter. Let's hope not. I think at this point we're ready to see some sun and some warmer temperatures. Let's first start with the radar. And here's what I can tell you is that a lot of this precipitation is moving out. What precipitation we are seeing is very light. There's still some drizzle around San Antonio. And as you get up towards maybe north of Kerrville, there is still some freezing drizzle in spots. And uh, the hill country up towards Austin, there still is ice. Uh, it's just that uh, here in San Antonio, most of that has melted. So temperatures 36 in San Antonio, 37 in New Braunfels, 35 in Austin. That's another place that was hit very hard. They are now above freezing, but many places there without power. 32 Fredericksburg, 32 in Rock Springs. And as we look around the area, there's only a couple of spots there that are at or below freezing. That's Bernie Stage and Lost Maples. Those numbers should rise above that mark here very, very soon. Your extended forecast or a look at the forecast for today, I should say. Some small chances of drizzle through about noontime. And then we start to see those temperatures rise and maybe just maybe some sun late this afternoon. 47 the forecast high. No lily winds anywhere from 5 to 10 miles per hour. We'll show you some more pictures about the damage, showing some of the damage around the area. That's coming up. And we'll look at the weekend forecast, which is much, much nicer, guys. Sounds good. Thank you, Justin. Let's look out there with TransGuide. Looking over at Loop 1604, there was some drizzle there on our lens. Also here at Highway 281 in San Pedro. The good news, no accidents right now. We have some stalled or disabled vehicles in a few spots right now, but we're really hoping to give uh, tech stop first responders and those tow truck drivers a bit of a break after a very busy last couple of days. Still some rather icy conditions and that one camera shot we just showed you up in Kerrville. And for now, let's look at today's nine at nine. The Federal Reserve raising its short term borrowing rate by another quarter point. It's the latest in a string of borrowing cost increases aimed at slowing the economy and easing inflation, a move that risks tipping the economy into a recession. The Fed's decision comes just a week after a government report showed inflation slowing down in December. 
As the economy recovers from the pandemic, a new threat is the looming debt ceiling showdown. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy met with President Biden for an hour yesterday to discuss the issue. McCarthy sounded optimistic after the meeting. The White House said Biden made it clear that they cannot allow the U.S. to default and that this obligation is not negotiable. The labor market continues to defy the threat of a looming recession. More than 11 million jobs are up for grabs right now, the highest since July. The number of available jobs unexpectedly went up in December and exceeded economists' expectations. Some experts think this could be the first recession in U.S. history without significant job losses. President Biden is set to meet with a small group of Congressional Black Caucus members later today to discuss police reform. It comes a day after the family of Tyree Nichols laid him to rest, three weeks after he died following a brutal police beating captured on disturbing video. Severe winter weather is affecting millions of Americans from the south to the northeast. More than 370,000 people in Texas were without power as of late yesterday. This winter storm also brought more than an inch of sleet to sections of Arkansas, Kentucky, Illinois, Missouri, and Oklahoma. And now the northeast is preparing for a separate bone-chilling blast. You don't need a positive COVID test anymore to get prescribed antiviral drugs. The FDA removed the requirement for Paxlovid. Healthcare providers can now write prescriptions based on symptoms and risk of developing severe COVID-19, which is important because the drugs work best when given early. Republican attorneys general from 20 states are warning CBS and Walgreens against mailing abortion pills within their states. That includes Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton. The letters blast the Justice Department's decision that concluded federal laws did not prohibit the mailing of abortion pills. The attorneys general suggest they may bring civil lawsuits to challenge that claim. You might have to do a little extra planning before your next trip across the pond. The United Kingdom is implementing a new electronic travel authorization scheme. Now that means American travelers will have to get permission before entering the UK. The online process should be done a few days before travel and will cost a small fee. The UK plans to fully enforce this by the end of the year. A big crowd this morning in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania to watch Punxsutawney Phil emerge from his hibernation. It's a tradition that goes back to at least 1841. This year, Phil did see his shadow, so according to the legend, there will be six more weeks of winter. And that's today's Nine at Nine. 5 in your morning headlines. A driver in Las Vegas, lucky a police officer and good Samaritan gambled on saving his life. And a guy runs right into traffic on a busy highway and survives. Plus a Kobe Bryant jersey going up for auction expected to bring in millions and another country artist on the list for nominees for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. David Sears is here. We're just talking about that this morning. This one might surprise you. Then again, it might not. You might expect this one. Okay. We'll have that for you in just a second. But first, we're going to start with this. You're watching smoke taking over the inside of a car. That's a good Samaritan right there. You can barely see the smoke. It's just starting to billow. This is body cam video from a Las Vegas police officer, Derek Stebbins, that person with him, just a bystander from Kentucky. He was in Vegas for the first time with his wife when they witnessed this crash. The driver of a car lost control, smashed right into a palm tree in the median. When they got to the car, he was not responding. The officer tried to get him to... Good on the other side, the driver's side, the Good Samaritan worked the other side of the car. The officer also trying to keep crowd back so nobody got hurt. The smoke was getting thicker. They finally got to the driver and were able to pull him out of the car just in time. Watch what happened. You see those flames? Yeah, they almost got the legs and the feet of the driver. Ooh, they were able to pull him to safety in the nick of time. If we weren't there, I think he would have been burned in the vehicle. Give me a red for a minute, have medical expedite. He's trapped in the vehicle. And I don't hear very well or sometimes act like I don't. So maybe I, I probably should have listened to him, but I tried to help. I think it was awesome that he stayed. I pushed a lot of them back just to make sure the scene was safe. Police officer Stebbins hospitalized due to smoke inhalation. Good news, he is back on the job. The driver of the car now facing DUI charges. He was taken to the hospital as well. He's expected to make a full recovery. Right side of the screen, check that out. That is a guy out in the middle of the highway. Here he is again. Look at this. This guy just walks out in the middle of this highway. 
That is I-10, and you are watching dash cam video from another 18-wheeler all happening. This is in Phoenix on I-10. The traffic was going about 68 miles an hour. The Arizona DPS says they did get a call but never found that person. The head of the Arizona Trucking Association says the driver of the truck with the dash cam video should be applauded for the way he kept his cool. He knew how to react or how not to react because this could have been a total disaster. The damage is endless, right? There could have been catastrophic loss of life had one of those trucks hit another truck, you know, or another vehicle. And then, you know, what what happened from there? I mean, it could have been gone back, you know, several dozen cars. Yeah, I don't know what that guy was thinking. Bradley says this is a great reminder not to drive distracted and keep some distance between you and the vehicle in front of you and be over observant. Whew. All right, you're looking at one of the most iconic jerseys in NBA history. That is the Lakers number 24 belongs to Kobe Bryant. He wore that jersey during the 2007-2008 season, the year he won the NBA Most Valuable Player Award. He wore that jersey 25 times that year, and now the jersey is going up for auction. The Southby says it could go for as much as $7 million, but there's more. You also get the photo of Kobe screaming with excitement during the playoff game against the Denver Nuggets. You also get other photos and artwork and books. I think one thing that we see with Kobe Bryant is that he touches people beyond the scope of basketball. He doesn't just touch athletes, he touches executives, he touches businessmen who also want to be the best version of themselves. And that was the Mamba, Mamba mentality, right? The constant quest to be the best version of yourself. And so I think when you think about his legacy, Part of what he left the world was his mentality. And I think that's what really makes Kobe so special. And that's what makes this jersey so special. Yeah, he definitely was mentally tough. The bidding ends February 9th. By the way, Kobe scored 645 points in the 25 games. He wore that jersey. That's 26 a game. His career average, 25 a game. All right, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominees have been announced. There are 14, eight, our first time nominees, including Cheryl Crow, Missy Elliott, Joy Division, New Order, Cindy Lauper, George Michael, and Willie Nelson. And the White Stripes and Warren Zevon, also first time nominees. Fans can vote for their picks at vote.rockhall.com now through April 28th, or you can just go to Cleveland and vote in person if you'd like. <laughs> Inductees will be announced in May. The induction ceremony is gonna be held in the fall. Willie Nelson going into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. How about that? We know he's watched Case yeah. in the past, so yeah. well, if you're watching, yeah, congratulations. Congrats. congratulations. Honestly, I think some people I, might be surprised. Right. Country well, I, guy, but you know. I thought he was there already, him. though. But here he is. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm so. with you. That's another one of those. I thought he yeah. was kind of already, already, already there. in there. Yeah, yeah. He should have probably been there a long Probably time ago. so. But hey, he keeps cranking out the hits. Yes, he does. Stays on tour. So. All right, David, thank you. All right. Right now we're 9, 10, 36 degrees. And Tiffany Huertas joins us now with a look at what's coming up next. Good morning from boots to western hats. Rodeo season is here. We're taking you to a special store in downtown that has been operating here for more than 100 years. The story behind this store next. For more than 100 years, presidents, ranchers, celebrities, tourists, and locals have been going to a store downtown for custom-shaped and fitted hats. And just in time for rodeo season, our Tiffany Huertas takes us to Paris Hatters on Broadway Street with a look at what, what makes these hats so special. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. The moment you step in here, you're going to see thousands of hats, but you're also going to see several special photographs all over the wall. To talk more about this, we have Alex Sledge, the store manager. Good morning, Alex. Tell us about the history behind the store. Oh, good morning. Um, so Paris Hatters has been open since 1917. It was opened by my grandfather and his brother, and uh, we have been in operation for 106 years. Tell us about these pictures behind you. Oh, gosh. So this kind of tells the story of our store. I, I, I always tell people if these walls could talk, um, it showcases photos of all of our celebrity clientele, including um, the Pope, Pope John Paul II, um, Johnny Cash, Tommy Lee Jones, um, Bob Dylan, Christian Louboutin, the shoe designer, and many, many more. Um, so we have been very fortunate to fit all of these folks in our store and you know them to walk away with a great hat from Paris Adders. 
When a customer comes in here, can you tell us about the experience? Yeah, so um, we always tell people, you know, getting a hat is kind of like getting an art piece for your head. You want it to be the right color for you. You want it to be, you know, the right brim size. You want it to frame your face. So we do all of that for you. Make sure that it looks correct for you and you'll leave with a unique hat. And can you take us to the other side, which is very, very special? Absolutely. Follow me. So this is our western side of the store and my mom, Myrna. Um, this is our steamer. Um, so this is kind of where we have all of our western hat styles. So this is embroidery work that I do um, for clients on commission. It's um, all custom. So if you need something custom embroidered, come see me. Um, and we have all of our westerns on this side and we can shape up a hat however you like. We carry every quality that Stetson makes in both straw and felt starting at 6X all the way up to 1000X, which is the finest hat that they make and not everyone carries that thousand X we do we have it in store and in both colors and all sizes and it comes with a beautiful hand tooled leather suitcase and before we go we have here Myrna the owner of the store tell us a little bit about what it means to you to have the store still here in San Antonio in downtown sure um, well my husband Abe and I have worked a long and hard over the years just as his mother and his father to make Paris Hatters what it is today. And we're very proud to be an iconic part of San Antonio and extremely proud of our daughter, Alex, who is now the next generation that's ready to take over. Um, she brings a new, fresh look to the place, a new aspect, and uh, we couldn't be happier. It's all about family and tradition. And of course, rodeo season's here, so I bet a lot of people are gonna stop by. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We're gonna have thank more you. coming up on the noon show. We'll send it back to you. Thank you, Tiffany, we look forward to it. 36 degrees, and we'll take that, folks. Anything above freezing, we need a break around here. And I'm thinking about all the exhausted linemen, yes. police officers, firefighters, tow truck drivers, tech stop hero truck drivers, you name it. They've been putting in some OT these last couple yes. days. They have, and we, we appreciate all the work that they do for sure. And th there's going to be a, quite a few people, I think, that are going to be working really hard this afternoon with the chainsaws and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, Got a lot, lot of branches additives. down. So many so. branches, mm -hmm. yeah. And we're not quite out of the woods yet, although the good news is, and you're about to tell us, mm -hmm. the biggest stuff has now moved out. It has moved out, and we're starting to see some peaks of sun here and there, so that's gonna help good. a lot. I wanna first start with a video. Skywatcher, uh, you're probably familiar with him by now, sends in so many great videos. So we had the, uh, you remember the time lapse yesterday of the ice and collecting on the trees and the trees starting to get weighed down. So this is the reverse effect. Okay. So last night we saw temperatures jump up above freezing and you'll actually see here that the uh, tree actually starts to come back. Oh yeah, more you can upright. see the lift. Uh, yeah. You see the, the weight being lifted off the tree, so to speak, uh, which is a great shot. Skywatch, thank you so that much for so seeing cool. that. Oscar. That is awesome. And let me switch over to our, store, our KSAT Connect feature here real quick and I okay. want to show you a couple other pictures that we got going on if you'll bear with me there we go uh, this is some of the wow. yeah, kind of the unfortunate uh, side of things here with the, look at that tree I mean that's a huge huge tree the weight of the ice brought that down it cracked in several several spots there so that's the kind of cleanup we were talking about not surprised up in Timberwood Park area Timberwood Park and that's mm -hmm. an important important distinction of where exactly this is uh, Spring Branch another really hard hit area and it looks like a tree kind of came down on the truck there. Hopefully there's not a lot of damage, but uh, we put out an article yesterday about insurance and how to deal with this sort of thing. If you want to check it out on ksat.com, I know a lot of people are going to have to uh, deal with all that today. So we're, uh, we're thinking about you and hopefully cleanup goes smoothly. Here's the look outside. We've got cloudy conditions, although it just seems a little bit brighter, right? We're starting to see things uh, get a little less, uh, well, less drizzle. And I think these clouds will begin to clear as we head into the afternoon and we'll actually see some sun. 36 right now, 38 at Stinson, 37 Kelly, 36 at Randolph. And here's a look at the radar. We still do have some returns out here, but they're very, very light. And this is kind of the back edge of it. Nothing here around San Antonio other than maybe a little bit of patchy drizzle. Uh, we did get some rain out of all this. And I think this is important to note that since December 1st, we've had about 1.8, but since January 1st, we've had 1.33. And that's a little bit below average, but it's good to see that we're getting rain and that maybe the tides are turning a little bit. And as we go into 2023, uh, we'll have more opportunities. And by the way, we have some more rain chances down the line, Tuesday into Wednesday.
So there's, there's going to be another chance here uh, to add to our rainfall totals for the year as we head into February now. Uh, so here's the big picture, and yes, there still is some freezing rain and freezing drizzle going on across central Texas and then north Texas, even around Dallas, which has just been so hard hit. But even there, temperatures will get above freezing today as this system finally pushes east. And that's kind of the clearing line right there. So we got to wait on that to move through, but then things will clear up pretty quickly. So here's a look at the forecast. Uh, we'll go to 4 o'clock today. Clearing line starting to move into parts of Bear County, and then by this evening, clear skies. That is going to lead to some chilly temperatures tonight. I don't think we get down to freezing by tomorrow morning, but it will be close, and then all of Friday will be sunny. So. Uh, we'll see temperatures make their way up to about 47 this afternoon here in town. You'll find some warmer readings out west where there will be more sun. Uvalde, Carrizo Springs. And then tonight we drop down to the mid 30s. There will be more freezing numbers for Bernie, Fair Oaks Ranch, Canyon Lake, Kerrville. So any of the uh, melting that occurs today, which will happen, some of that, some of that could refreeze up in the whole country. Something to watch. But from there on out, we get temperatures nice and warm 62 Saturday for the cattle drive. Uh, well, it won't be that way in the morning. It'll be a little chilly to start probably 30s and 40s, but by the afternoon 60s and then 72 Sunday 76 Monday. We get those uh, additional rain chances as I talked about Tuesday and Wednesday. That looks a little better to handle that kind of rain. Uh, yeah, that that actually may be in the form of some thunderstorms. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, you know, we go from winter to spring and we're just jumping all over the place. Oh, February in South Texas, folks. Never a dull moment. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. 922, 36 degrees. So I'm sure most of you and most of us are looking forward to warmer weather. And if you're already planning your summer vacation, one airline has a deal for you, how you can get unlimited flights this summer for a pretty reasonable price when we come back. If you're thinking of warmer days and planning your summer vacation, Frontier Airlines has a deal for you. They're launching an all-you-can-fly summer pass, and it'll cost you just $399. That includes nearly unlimited flights between May and September. So Frontier says each flight will cost pass holders just one cent, plus taxes, fees, and any charges for seats or checked baggage. The airline currently has more than 100 destinations and plans to add new nonstop service between multiple cities and Puerto Rico this summer. And just announced Beyonce will soon be heading back on tour. She announced the Renaissance World Tour on Instagram. It will feature music from her latest album, Renaissance, which has been garnering acclaim since it dropped last summer. Beyonce's official website says the tour will start in Sweden this May, and she's stopping in Dallas and her hometown of Houston in September. The Grammy winner has been off the road since she toured with her husband, Jay-Z, back in 2018. 926, 36 degrees. Still a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9, including a preview of the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive happening this weekend. So Mike and Fiona from SA Live are going to be joining us in the next half hour to tell us what we can expect from the parade this year. Plus, Mike's wearing an amazing cable knit cardigan right now uh, that Very you got to see to Very believe. handsome. Uh, that's right. We'll interview his sweater coming up. Uh, David will be back with RJ to talk about the Spurs game last <laughs> night and who's going to be running the Cowboys offense next season. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's 930. Let's look out there with live cam. Still chilly, but hey, it looks a little better than it did yesterday morning. And we're at 36 degrees right now. Yeah, much better. That temperature is uh, making a big difference. A lot of melting going on overnight, uh, especially across northern San Antonio. We're starting to see some of that in the hill country's temperatures rise above freezing. So improvements there. But uh, as we've been talking about, there's still going to be a lot of cleanup going on with all the tree branches down uh, across the hill country. I want to show you an interesting map here. This is the power outage map per county across Texas. And what you notice here is that the I-35 corridor was hit so very hard by this ice storm. So stretching from San Antonio, hill country, Austin, still a ton of places without power there. Um, a lot of places uh, went or a lot of people there in Austin went the night without power. Then all the way up to Dallas, Fort Worth seeing issues and then even as far east as Tyler. So corridor of of uh, some pretty heavy ice yesterday. Now things are going to improve today. Everyone's going to get above freezing. I think up and down the I-35 corridor. So there will be a lot of improvement. Temperatures right now 36 degrees at the airport, 33 Kerrville, 37 in New Braunfels, 39 Hondo. Uh, above freezing all across Barrett County. In fact, we're closing in on 40 down there at Stinson and Pleasanton. 
And our case at 12 hour forecast cloudy first half of the day 40 noon time. But look what happens by 3 or 4 o'clock. Sun begins to appear that should get us into the upper 40s for highs before we sink back down into the 30s tonight. What about the weekend and how long does this cold weather stick around? I think you're going to like the warmer temperatures coming up uh, that forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Justin. After a two day delay because of weather, the trial of Andre McDonald resumed this morning beginning at 10 a.m. Andre McDonald is accused of killing his wife, Andreen, back in 2019. Closing arguments and deliberations are expected to begin today. If found guilty, Andre McDonald is facing up to life in prison. We will continue to live stream the trial on KSAT.com, KSAT Plus, and our YouTube channel once the trial picks up again. And of course, we're going to have the latest on our later newscast. Now, a reminder that the deadline for Bear County property tax payments is today. That deadline extended because of the winter weather we had the past two days. The tax assessor collector's office now open through 6.30 p.m. You can also make your payments online if you'd like at www.bear.org slash Texas or by phone or by calling that number on your screen right now. The drop-off locations are also available. The Spurs go cold in the fourth quarter and cannot snap their losing streak. Must have been the weather. David is back with RJ for more on the latest loss for the San Antonio Ooh, Spurs. These are piling yeah. up, David, piling up. Glad they all made it to the arena last night after, yeah, the, after the big winter ice freeze. Um, first off, we have not had a chance to do this. Let's congratulate Jeremy Sohan. He's going to represent the San Antonio Spurs Yay. at All-Star Weekend as a rookie, so good for him. Unfortunately, last night, yeah. Let's little, show what happened. A little yeah. injury, yeah. Uh, a little Whoops. injury there. Yeah, Jeremy Sohan will be competing in the Rising Stars Challenge. And immediately Ooh. after this uh, announcement here, then he suffered a lower back injury. Day. Wow, that looked like a 65-year-old guy just like, Ooh, oh, what happened? <laughs> Ooh. This step, yeah. Yeah, the step. That's all it took was just one step. And you're like, ouch. No, but anyway, not fun. Uh, so congrats to Jeremy Sohan. Unfortunately, Spurs, David, it's been the same song and dance we've yeah. seen all season long. They are close. It's an entertaining game. And then they just fall apart late in the fourth quarter. So here, I've decided I'm going to look at this two ways. Okay. Number one, I'm getting a little frustrated with the mistakes down the stretch. Right. And them losing. But number two, they're going to learn. And, and we knew this oh. year was not going to be a very successful year other than them learning how to deal with situations. Yep. and and circumstances. So I'm, I'm looking forward to next year. I'm going to watch the rest of this year. They're yeah. an exciting team to watch. They're always in all these games. They're not getting blown out like they used to get blown out lately. And uh, but it's just, it gets frustrating. But I know next year with some of the core guys they have, we're going to take a step forward. So how about that, Steph? How there about that? Go. For I like, that. Um, yes. like that. I Malachi, like that. Malachi Branham with a career yeah. high 22 points. He's one of their rookies as well. So stepping up because Trey Jones got hurt as well. And again, no Sohan here. I think Sohan should be okay. Yeah, he well, he'll serious. be okay when come come All Star time. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, tomorrow night is their last home game before. They go on the road for the rodeo road trip and All Star Weekend. So yeah, hopefully he he'll be all right. He can yeah, show up. So, be good. I think he will. So we seven o'clock for that one tomorrow night. And we'll <laughs> go, be there, right? Go. We're going to be there, right? I, we plan doing to our be live there, stream David. before yes, the game. Yes, talking that about, is the plan. So, about yes. so all right, that's so, the yeah. Plan. We, you know, we're still doing our thing. We're still coming out. We're yeah. still yes. competing. <laughs> we still we still love the Spurs. Go yes. Spurs go. Um, so, um, well. Here's the other big news. On, Mike yes. McCarthy, the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, is now going to be calling the offensive plays since Kellen Moore is no longer there to do mm -hmm. that duty. Yeah, big so. news there out of uh, Dallas with the coach there going back to his roots in Green Bay, calling plays where Kellen Moore had been doing this. But I guess Mike McCarthy is like, you know what? If I got to stay with Dak, I'm going to go out and do these, <laughs> call these plays myself. But here's <laughs> the thing. Point. They're going to change the offense. They're going to go back to the West Coast type mm -hmm. offense that McCarthy ran with Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. So we're going to see how that works out with Dak, because if you go back to Dak's college mm -hmm. days, yeah. he was more of that kind of offensive quarterback and they tried to make him a pocket passer and we see how the, well that's worked out. Yeah, and uh, that's been one thing that a lot of people have been calling for, for Dak to be a little bit more mobile, move the mm -hmm. pocket a little bit more, kind of uh, even kind of use his legs a little bit more. So it'll be interesting to see what uh, they get out of Coach McCarthy. Didn't McCarthy call a place like a couple years he ago? He did. He yeah. did in Green Bay. Yeah, he did yeah. in Green Bay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah for, for a number of Rogers. Rogers. Yeah. But I think the other thing, and maybe I'm reading between the lines here. The other thing is also clear to me about this move uh -huh. is McCarthy and the Cowboys collapse this coming season.
he is out of there. Mm -hmm. He is not going to survive. Well, that's why I was saying if he's going to go down, he's going to go down calling his own plays exactly. and doing his own offense instead of leaving it to I, another person, as in Kellen Moore. So I think Jerry said, you've got one year to well, finish. There we go. I, right. I'm, and, I and, I, and, and the indication is because – all the assistants got fired and left, and he's right. the only he, he's left standing. And it's like, okay, we'll make these changes for you, but uh, yep. this is this is your last opportunity to, to uh, get us to at least the NFC Championship game. Yeah, so that we'll would see. Be nice, yeah. yeah. I think oh, that would be uh, San Francisco, yeah. maybe. So, so kind of like the uh, kind of yeah. like the Spurs, we're looking forward to the Cowboys next season. <laughs> Yeah. So there you go. Next season. Next season. Yeah, we got this. Why is it always next, next season? season? Yes. Uh. <laughs> We've had to say that a lot lately, haven't we? <laughs> All right. Absolutely. RJ, David, thank you guys. Uh -huh. 937, 36 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And when we come back, Mike and Fiona from SA Live will be joining us to talk about the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive happening this weekend. We're, we're, we are a week away. We are going to talk. Anchors talking. Uh, we are a week away from the opening of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. It kicks off this weekend at the annual Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. So as you can hear, as they mm -hmm. line us. <laughs> All the snickering, yes. <laughs> we'll be broadcasting from the Cal Drive, and they join us now. Good close, morning, guys. Close captioning is putting yes. garbled <laughs> communication <laughs> at the bottom. Yes. Hi, Fiona. Hello. As you can hear oh, hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? He's ignoring and, me since we all work together this morning. So. Hi, Mike. Hi. Good We're all coordinated, though, I so that's yes. good. Yes. You guys mm -hmm. look fantastic. Yeah. Love the sweater, Mike. Thank you. Not necessarily <laughs> cattle Drive attire, but we will be uh, in different mm -hmm. wardrobe for Saturday. No, I understand. Mm -hmm. 10 o'clock. Yes, yep. and that's this Saturday. That's this Saturday, yep. All right, so tell us more about the rate. Tell us mm -hmm. tell us everything. Don't leave anything out this time. Yes. Well, there's right. cattle. <laughs> yes. Longhorns, I believe. Longhorns. <laughs> yes. The Kimba Longhorns mm -hmm. are once again going to be a part of it. And, mm -hmm. boy, in, they've got about 75. They're a big picture mm -hmm. behind you. Parade starts at 11. Uh, I-35. Yeah, 11 o'clock. <laughs> did I say 10? Yeah, you did, but that's okay. It's 11. It's all right. It is we, have earlier, early. we have yeah, to be there earlier, which is fine. We have to be there early. So at 35 in Houston Street and ends at the Alamo. They don't have construction this year, so it's going to be pretty much a oh, straight good. shot. Yeah, coming on in here. Mm -hmm. And the other fun thing, the little G was about the parade is it's anything in the parade is either on hooves or wagon wheels. Mm -hmm. No rubber tires in there. So mm -mm, yeah. not at all. Mm -hmm. And always so exciting to be there and the crowds that come out and of course all the pomp and circumstance. We just love it every year. And I know mm -hmm. um, so some people this week were like, wow, what a cold weekend. Usually this cattle drive is cold, but not too bad. I understand you guys are prepared for the outdoors. Oh, Mike, this is you. I mean, yes. I, like, I don't know if you've looked at the forecast, but, we're, <laughs> but I hear it's going to be OK. This is did your you wheelhouse. Know? Well, in years, in years past, we did have kind of drizzly weather one time. Last year was just brutally cold. It's going to be pretty chilly when we get down there at about 7 o'clock. Do you remember the year that you bought the heated socks that yes, didn't fit? Yes, didn't fit. <laughs> they didn't fit they didn't in fit. your boots? Yeah. Or they, didn't <laughs> they didn't fit in his boots, okay. so he couldn't wear them. Uh, he was all yeah, excited cold, for them. Then it's going to be just a, a beautiful, beautiful day. And it's always so fun to stand there once they close off Houston Street and see just people lined up and down Houston Street. The Jefferson Lasso is going to be there. Uh, we've got the... Um, uh, Escaramusa. Escaramusa. Escaramusa mm -hmm. uh, on horseback. Mm -hmm. I love and our route here. Houston yes. Street ends at Alamo. Ends at the Alamo. Ends yeah. at Alamo. Doesn't get any more, you know, just like That's right to the poignant. point than that. <laughs> also, at the same time, it's going to be going on is the Vaquero Cookoff down at uh, Market Square. So that's where everybody enters, and these teams, four different categories. Mm -hmm. Um, and they, they all have to compete, and you can get samples for free down there. Just head on down there if you want to. Nice. All right, a little less than yeah. left. Uh, first of all, how can people watch? Yes, not everybody can come down, so how can they watch? Tune on Channel 12 okay. on TV. Mm -hmm. and, and it'll be and, streaming as well. And, and it's going to be streaming as well on the KSAT app. And uh, again, beginning at 11 o'clock. And if it runs long, it may go a little bit longer than past noon. So okay. just, just once we get everything in there. And you said the route was different because of construction last time around? Yeah, they had to make a couple of different turns, so it took a little bit longer. But this is just going to be a straight, straight shot. shot right down Houston. So, And we're going to be parked right there at Jefferson and Houston. In front of the Buckhorn. Right in front mm -hmm. of, yeah, just across the street from the Buckhorn. Right All there. right, the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive with Mike and Fiona. It's going to yes. be a lot of fun. Love this tradition for yep. our city. I look, I look forward to seeing you guys out there. Come on down. Yeah. Okay. I look forward to seeing your outfits. <laughs> no heated socks. No, no, no heated socks. <laughs> All right.
You know, great seeing you. You too. Mike, we'll see you in the morning. <laughs> Bright and okay. early, I will be here. <laughs> Love you, bro. Okay, all right, guys. 944, 37 degrees, and I think we're going to go to Justin. Yes. Yeah. Justin. I look forward to tuning in, by the way. You guys do a great job. Yes. And Thank I you, Justin. I love your sweater, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody you wanna, does. You want to wear it for this next weathercast? <laughs> no, I'm good. Okay, <laughs> let's take a look at a picture here. This is out of San Antonio. More tree damage. I mean, these uh, these pictures just keep coming in, and it's uh, you know it's sad to see these these established oak trees just really uh, getting taken down by the size. But that is a huge limb there that has come down. And I want to take you uh, to Austin. Man, if you want to talk about a city that was really hit hard by the ice, that is Austin. They are still a lot of places without power there. This is southeast Austin, and there is a ton of tree damage everywhere. Uh, it just looks like a sea of white there. Uh, I have a feeling it's going to take a long time for Austin to clean up after all of that ice, and they're still working on restoring power there. I've heard maybe Friday, tomorrow is when uh, they may be able to get power back on there. And there's still some spots here in the hill country that are working on uh, getting power restored. Most everything here in San Antonio is improving. I was looking at the CPS numbers. Uh, customers affected are down to about 5,000, so it's, it's getting better and better by the minute. And as we look at the cloud cover, starting to lift some. It's still cloudy, but uh, looking better there, too. 36 degrees right now. Dew point is at 34. Northerly winds at about 8 miles per hour. And here's the big picture with the live radar. Still some light freezing rain and freezing drizzle working its way through central Texas, but notice most of it's north of us. And temperatures are above freezing, really all the way up to Kerrville now. So that freezing line's up here somewhere. Even Austin now is above freezing, and that is a good improvement. 37 in New Braunfels, 35 Austin, 32 Fredericksburg, still at freezing there. Same for Rock Springs, but I think those numbers will be above that mark here very soon. And 41 down in Carrizo Springs. As we look around Bear County, most everyone is starting to warm up. We'll see temperatures near 40 here soon, I think. And by the lunch hour, you'll really start to see things warm up as far as temperatures go. Uh, wind chill values, this is where it still feels a little chilly, right? We've got winds enough there to create wind chill of 30 here in Texas. 29 Converse, 30 in New Braunfels. And I want to talk about February really quick. We didn't get to yesterday. Obviously, things are busy, but we've entered into the month of February. And the average high when we start the month is 65. By the time we get to the end of the month, the average high is 70. So uh, what we know about February is that we get extremes. And uh, yesterday and the last several days are a great example of that. A lot of ice, really cold. And then by the weekend, we're in the 70s. So a lot of ups and downs here. In fact, the record low in February is four, set back in 1899. The record high is 100, set back in 1996. And those dates aren't that far apart. So it just goes to show you, we can see a lot in February, a lot of different kind of weather. Here's the big picture, and this storm system is finally starting to move out some. Still some light freezing drizzle and rain around Dallas. Still seeing a little bit of that across North Texas, but the back edge of the storm is uh, getting ever so close. And I think that we'll start to see some clearing in here. Uh, starting soon and then that clearing line will try to work its way towards San Antonio this afternoon. So here's what the forecast our commute computer models are thinking by four o'clock clouds are starting to shift out some and then by the evening clear skies and the sun will be out tomorrow for sure and we'll see a much warmer reading. So Friday and really the weekend and to start next week will be really nice. 40 degrees noontime 42 at one o'clock. We're at 46 by 3 p.m. 47 this afternoon. And we'll see, again, skies clearing with northerly winds around 5 to 10 miles per hour. 40 at 9 o'clock, and that's tonight. And then by uh, tonight into tomorrow morning, we're at 35. But 59 for high on Friday, 62 for the cattle drive on Saturday, or at least by the afternoon. It'll be a little chilly in the morning. 72 Sunday. And we've got some more rain chances showing up Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. Looks good. Can't wait for the 70s. I'm excited. I think it's... Uh, <laughs> It's kind of needed at this point. I think so, too. Yeah. Thanks, Justin. Yeah. Just into our newsroom, a boil water nose from MBU or New Braunfels Utilities. This is for customers within what we're told is the River Chase pressure zone. The pressure of the system within that area has apparently fallen below 20 PSI due to some sort of electrical outage. New Braunfels Utilities is working to restore the water pressure as soon as possible, but for now, you're asked to boil any water for drinking or cooking. If you have any questions or you need assistance, you are told to call this number on your screen, 830-608-8971 for any kind of help. Just about 10 till, 37 degrees. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, 952. The four well-known stars of 80 for Brady are having a good time talking about their new movie. The movie celebrates both friendship and football. ABC's George Pinocchio shares the story of this new Brady bunch. Here's the story of 80 for Brady. About some lovely ladies cheering Tommy on. Spank me right here. Spank me here, Tom. Oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. 80 for Brady is inspired by the true story of four football loving friends who happen to love football superstar Tom Brady. It also speaks to the power of aging. In my case, it, it allows you to be able to say the things maybe years ago you just kind of thought about but didn't have the will or the, or the energy or the bravery to say, and now it just comes blathering out of my mouth. This is a spicy wings kind of piss. Bring the pain! I could use a little spice. I know her! If you black out, who you want me to call? An ambulance? As far as I'm concerned, this is the best time of my life. Taking this one, he's cute. I live for the moment, and uh, I find that life is filled with moments. I didn't know these things when I was younger. Let's go to the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is no place for four old women. This could be Tom's last one. He's almost 40. That's like 80 in people years. Yeah, we're 80 in people years. If people laugh, <laughs> And, and they root She's for us. She's a sucker that's for a laugh. What? A sucker for a laugh. You bought, you were a sucker for a laugh on Grace and Frankie, too. I love, that's why I love you. You make me laugh. And I laughed out loud several times watching, and I teared up watching as well. Oh, that's so nice. That's so great. We love that. We, we wanted this movie to be all those things. We face the unknown together. Isn't that what friendship is? It's interesting because it's a movie about f football and friendship. So it's very male, a lot of testosterone from that end. And then all of this great, what is our one? Estrogen. Estrogen. Well, we don't have any estrogen anymore, <laughs> so it's got to be something else. I don't know. Oh, I do. Willpower. I do, too. I, I do. My oh, pills. I don't you do and that. I. No, right. we don't do I that. There the ghost we call the 84 Brady. Do a Jersey swap. 84 Brady is rated PG-13. It's in theaters on Friday. In Los Angeles, George Pinocchio for ABC News. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA 9, we are talking with the Chief Marketing Officer of the San Antonio Stock Show Rodeo about opening day next Thursday and what we can all expect this year. Plus, February is American Heart Month, and it is important to focus on our health. Tomorrow on GMSA at 9, we're going to talk to a local doctor about what we can do to lower our risk of cardiovascular disease and what signs may indicate someone has something wrong with their heart. And temperatures are finally warming up. We're going to be up near 40 by lunchtime, 47 this afternoon, and we're already starting to see some reports of the sun trying to shine through. We'll certainly see some sun, I think, later this evening and then by tomorrow for sure. Sunny skies 59, 62 on Saturday. Cattle drive will be a little chilly in the morning, but the afternoon will be awesome. 72 Sunday and sunny. We do have some more rain chances that show up by uh, Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Don't forget a large planned power outage began in the Bernie area right around nine o'clock this morning. We haven't heard that it has ended yet, but it was they had to take the system offline to bring things back online, according to LCRA. So be advised that it is affecting some traffic signals in the Bernie area. Yeah, it was pushed back from initially 8 a.m. o'clock to nine o'clock. That's right. So we'll try to keep you updated. All right. Well, you have a nice day and enjoy the sun. Yes. But we'll see. We'll enjoy. see it. <laughs>